All right, this lesson is about headless services. Um, we are going to dig a bit deeper into what the difference between a service and a headless service is. It's basically both a service, but the one has a TCP router uh, with load balancing abilities and the other doesn't. Uh, so there's, um, there's that. So we already have created the service, so it's enough if we describe it. Uh, we've uh, shown that um, there is a selector by the label. We have, oh, no IP address, but we do have an endpoint. Now, the, uh, in this case, the endpoint means that there is a DNS entry. Uh, in contrast to a regular service, now we don't only have this one. In contrast to a regular service, there is no IP address for the service itself, and um, there, there's only the DNS entry. Um, again, this works by using the selector, just like with a regular service. We see that our service, our stateful set is bound. So um, how can we verify that? I mean, we'll uh, get the pods. So we have this pod. And you can see that the IP address of this pod is uh, 214. And if we describe the service, you can see it's exactly that service, that IP address. Okay. So, but what's the implication of that? We, I, I told you that the DNS entry, but how does the DNS entry look like? Uh, um. So let's see ourselves. And what we create is, um, a little container and we'll start a bash. So we did that with the busy box in the prior examples, but um, I like the bash more than I like the, the original shell. So I created a little, uh, a little container image called inspect, which I use often for looking into things because I have a little uh, set of utilities installed that become into that become handy, especially as we want to dig and uh, NS lookup. So we need some DNS utilities now. Okay, so um, our service name is Postgres PostgreSQL dash service. We are in the Kubernetes training namespace. So uh, and the cluster domain is cluster .local. So knowing the cluster domain is cluster.local and the namespace and the name of the service, this automatically uh, means that this URL should resolve. So let's give it a try. We are inside of the pod, inside of the Kubernetes cluster, resolving the internal uh, using the internal DNS of Kubernetes, which uh, runs a core DNS. Uh, so if you cube cuddle a get pods and cube system, you're retrieving the pods in the namespace cube system. And uh, you can see that there are three core DNS pods running. And core DNS is used as Kubernetes internal DNS system. Well, there could be other DNS configurations in other Kubernetes versions, as it is pluggable, like, like most of the things in Kubernetes. But in this case, it's core DNS. And all you have to take away is that a headless service creates this DNS entry for you upon creation of the service. Uh, or to be precise, upon creation of the service, assuming that there is a backend that is bound to the service by using the, as the corresponding label. So this is how it determined and created the endpoint. So you can resolve this UI. And now you would ask yourself, why is this important? We talked about stable network identities. The pods of a stateful set, 
they do have a stable name, but they do not have a stable IP address. So if the pods are recreated, the IP address of the pods will change. And therefore, a discovery within the cluster or to the cluster using IP addresses is a stupid idea. Uh, maybe not in every case, but in most of the cases, you would rather go with the DNS name because this DNS name will be updated if something happens to, this, to the underlying pod. So this is your stable network identity and you should be very, very happy for it that something like this exists. Okay, um, so let's try what happens if we have a if we have multiple replicas. Um, you are aware that we haven't set up co any kind of clustering, but what we can do is we just create three pods with three Postgres servers that are totally un not connected to each other but they won't harm each other either. So we'll create a stateful set with three replicas running three pods each with a Postgres just to get a sense how the headless service will behave. So, and as you can see, uh, there is a strict order in in the creation of the containers. So uh, the next container in the stateful set is created with the name stateful set one, and the the third container isn't created before this container has been created successfully. So the first one is running, which means the second is automatically created uh, and that the container is creating. Note that if you have a Kubernetes cluster with a lot of Kubernetes nodes, the container image may not have been cached. And that's why the initial startup of a container may take minutes instead of seconds. All right, now we have a, a, a stateful set with three replicas, so we can cube cuddle get stateful sets and we see that there are three of three ready. Um, so this means we do a lookup and now instead of one IP address we'll get three IP addresses back which means that we'll have the three nodes covered. So kubectl uh, get service kubectl describe service Postgres service and you can see now that we have three endpoints and the endpoints are IP address and port IP address and port and you don't have to think much to uh, see that these are the IP addresses of our stateful set pods. So the takeaway here is that the headless service uses DNS instead of TCP routing uh, to provide you with a stable network identity. So in the, in the example of scaling up, it added endpoints. And although we haven't restarted this pod, because of the short time to live, a DNS lookup nearly immediately reflected the change of the, uh, of the stateful set. So you can use this DNS name to refer to the cluster. Now, be aware, we talked about a primary and a secondary. So it, it, it does not make sense to use this particular service because it, it'll resolve to three nodes and you, you want to resolve to the master. So you'll have to find a way to get a direct link to the master, uh, which could be the first node in the cluster, or it could be a node denoted with an additional headless service that you'll have control of independently from the entire stateful set by setting a certain marker or something, like a label. Um, so that's a, a challenge for a different day. 
kubectl gets stateful sets are uh, described to stateful service. There are new endpoints. Uh, we've uh, received the update. We've seen that the headless service did its magic.